No. Okay, everyone, so here's the deal. You have two points, P with coordinates negative 4, negative 4, and Q with coordinates 4, 12. And the first thing we have to do is, on an XY grid, draw the line segment PQ. Quick reminder, you know that you're dealing with a line segment because of these square brackets around the letters P and Q. The fact that it's a segment means it has a beginning and an end. We clear with that? Endpoints P and Q. Now, to save time, I've drawn that already. It's right here, okay? In a quiz or a test, what you should already pick up on just by looking at this, without doing any calculations yet, I already want you to develop the reflexes, which are, as I go from left to right, that line is going upwards. We agree with that? In other words, as I go from left to right, I can see that the line is following an upward trend. What that tells me is that the gradient, so that's the lowercase m that we'll find shortly, has to be positive, okay? If ever it were going downwards, then the gradient, lowercase m again, would have to be negative, okay? So already just, just from looking at this, we already know that the gradient is positive, okay? Second thing, before even starting the questions, and just from looking at this, you can tell that the line crosses the y-axis here, right? The more accurately you draw this thing, the better you can read off your graph, of course. And by looking at that, I'm quite confident already that the y-intercept is 4, meaning where it crosses the y-axis. No, careful. Notice the... Uh, fair question, though. Depends how you look at it, if it goes down or up. Meaning, if I look at it going from right to left or from left to right. Notice how here, I've clearly indicated the arrow on the x-axis. That's what we call the positive direction for x. From left to right. Similarly, there's a positive direction in the y direction. Downwards to upwards. Okay? Or from the bottom to the top. I know some textbooks will label your axes like this in both directions. When it comes to the x and y axis, you're better off labeling it with arrows that point in the positive direction because that's going to be our reference. When I say the line goes upwards, I mean as I go from left to right, meaning as I move in the positive x direction. Okay? Now, if I erase that, good. First, or sorry, second question. We need to calculate the coordinates of the midpoint M of the line segment PQ. Again, if you've drawn this properly in a quiz or a test, you should already know the answer. So before diving onto the formula, before diving onto any calculations, look at what you've actually drawn. I can see from this that, and hopefully you can see as well, M, the midpoint, is right here. Yeah, and just by looking at this, I can tell that its coordinates should be, well, x coordinate, it's on the y-axis, right? So the x-coordinate should be 0, and the y-coordinate appears to be 4. Yeah? Are we comfortable with that? The fact that it's midway between P and Q, that's the midpoint? So before you even do any calculations, get a good idea of what it should be. Now confirm that algebraically. And if you find that it's not 0, 4, like let's say you find, I don't know, the x-coordinate is 8. Look back at what you drew. That's why you drew it. I'm not having you draw this stuff to please me. I'm having you draw it so that you can look back at your diagram and go, no, something's off. Okay? Now, if I go ahead and calculate the coordinates of the midpoint, I'll start by reminding you of the formula you need to know. Given a line segment with endpoints P, whose coordinates are x1, y1, and Q, whose x-coordinates are x2, y2, the midpoint will have coordinates x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay? So, applying that to the coordinates we have here, P and Q, the midpoint M will have coordinates x1, so negative 4, plus x2, so that's 4, so negative 4 plus 4, over 2, and y1, so that's negative 4, plus y2, that's 12. Let's write that. That's negative 4 plus 12 over 2. Now, calculating this, negative 4 plus 4, if you're having trouble, if you find that you're making mistakes with the with sign errors, 
quite common. First of all, don't worry about it. Uh, we can overcome those relatively easily. Don't hesitate to go back to the very basics, right? When, as soon as you're working with negative numbers, it's often helpful to get rid of mistakes that you tend to make to do this, like literally scribble it. Quick number line. Place yourself at negative four, right? That's the first number in my calculation there, negative four plus four. So I'm standing here. For me to add four, what do I do? Go to the left or to the right? To the right. To the right. So you're moving to the right four units. You should be at zero. And I think visually we're all okay with that, right? So I know that the midpoint M will have X coordinate zero over two. The Y coordinate, negative four plus 12. You know, again, you're at negative four, so if you want, you can use the same doodle I made here. You're adding 12, so go to the right 12 units. That should bring you to eight, right? So the Y coordinate is gonna be eight over two. Don't stop there. As a rule of thumb, you carry out all the simplifications you can possibly make so that you don't leave the examiner having to do any work. Yep, it's all on you. Okay, now zero divided by two is just zero, and eight divided by two is four. That's the midpoint. And at this stage, if you get that in the quiz, it's question two, at this stage, looking back at the diagram you got there, you should be thinking, I've got that. That's definitely right. And you should be walking away from that question very confident. We move on to question three. And this one I know can be a bit more challenging. Okay, now I saw some of you as I walked around the classroom. Some of you are quite literally drawing the triangle, right? You're you know, moving along and making this type of thing, like the right angle triangle like I had done in class, right? And you're drawing all this, which is great. You can do that. But the formula I gave you, just for the sake of reminding you here, and I'll try and, I'll try and fit that here on the lower left-hand corner. Question three, we have to find the length of the line segment. And the formula you have in your notes is this. L is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That's our formula. In fact, I'll box that. That's what you need to know. And yep, that won't be given to you. Let me make that clear. You need to know that. Okay. Now, looking back at the coordinates of the points, remember, this guy here would be x1. That would be y1. This 4 here would be x2, and this 12 would be y2. Are we all comfortable with that? I'm just calling, I'm arbitrarily, arbitrarily, sorry, calling point P my point 1, and point Q would be the point 2 in this case. So looking back at this formula, I need to do x2 minus x1. Well, x2 minus x1, that's going to be 4 minus negative 4. Okay, be very careful of that. That's 4 minus negative 4. You don't want to mess that part up. Otherwise, there'll be a sign error. So this is going to equal to, let me make myself plenty of space here. That's 4 minus negative 4 squared plus y2 minus y1. So that's going to be 12 minus negative 4. Okay, now again, be careful. That's going to be 12 minus negative 4. That's squared as well. Take your time when you're doing these. Okay, as this is one of the questions I saw a few mistakes on as I walked around the classroom today. Okay, make sure you're taking your time with those signs. When I subtract something negative, just remember that means adding. Okay, remember the term subtraction means add the opposite of. So when you read four minus negative four, you could replace this minus by add the opposite of. So you can literally read that out as 4 plus the opposite of negative 4, which is very long. But what's the opposite of negative 4? 4, yeah. So when I read that, that means 4 plus 4. Okay? So doing that, that leads us to 4 plus 4, in parentheses squared, plus 12 minus negative 4. That's going to turn into 12 plus 4 squared. Still under the square root. That's equal to 8 squared plus 16 squared. And 8 squared, that's 64, plus 16 squared. I know not everyone knows these yet, but I'm going to be telling you to learn your square numbers up to 16 included. 16 squared is 256. Yeah. 
adding those two together, you definitely get 320. And that's underneath the square root. That's L. Now, this won't be a calculator quiz. You'd leave it like that. Okay? That's fine. You get that? That's full marks. Question four. Calculate the gradient or slope of the line PQ. Notice that here I've written PQ inside a pair of parentheses, not inside a pair of square brackets. That's because I'm now referring to the infinite line that goes on forever, right, on either end here. When it's written inside a pair of parentheses, it's an infinitely long line. You could spend your whole life drawing it. You wouldn't reach the end of it. Okay? Now, the gradient formula, and this is vital at this stage. You all need to know this. The gradient is given by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That needs to be known. Okay, I can't sugarcoat it. You have to know that. Also worth pointing out, you need to distinguish very clearly, hopefully it's clear in your minds, that this M is not the same as this one. The capital M refers to the midpoint of the line segment. The lowercase m that we're about to find refers to the gradient of the line. And when I say line, we're talking about this guy here. This line, PQ, has an equation that looks like that. The M we're calculating when we use this formula is this M right here. That's the gradient. We clear on that? So let's go ahead. Y2, I mean, this doesn't change, right? Y2 is still 12. Y1 is negative 4. So if I plug those in, that's 12 minus negative 4 over X2, which is 4, minus negative 4. Careful of sign errors again. You're subtracting something negative. That means adding. So I have 12 plus 4 over 4 plus 4. That's 16 over 8, which hopefully you're all comfortable in seeing. That's M equals to 2. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So that's our gradient. Yeah? Question 5. Showing all of your working, find the equation of the line PQ in standard form. That's this guy right here. Yeah, we're okay? Now, y equals to mx plus c. Let me just, sorry, that's question five. I'll do that over here. That should fit. Our target is y equals to mx plus c. We had seen a convenient formula for this, which provided we have the gradient and the x and y coordinates of one of the points the line passes through, we can use the following. We can use y minus b equals to m times in parentheses x minus a. That's the formula we had seen. Make sure you know that. Now, as a point a and b, and I'll just say a and b on the side here, a and b are the coordinates, the coordinates, of any, let me insist on the any here, any point through which, through which the line passes. We okay with that? So the two points that we know the line passes through with absolute certainty are the points P and Q, which we have up here. It doesn't matter which of the two points you choose to work with. You'll get the same answer in the end. I have a tendency, though, of choosing whichever point has the least amount of negative values inside it. So I think I would choose point Q with coordinates 4, 12. Hopefully that makes sense. So if I take point Q, I'll say use point Q with coordinates 4, 12. Now, just so you see where things fit in, A, sorry, A is therefore 4, and B is 12. M is... We already have up here, right? So that's the M that's going to go right there. Combining all these things, I have Y minus 12 equals to 2 times X minus 4. I need to distribute that 2 across that pair of parentheses on the right-hand side, which leads us to Y minus 12 equals to 2X minus 8. Remember, this 2 goes onto the X and onto the 4 that's being subtracted. 
I now add 12 to both sides to make y the subject, which leads to y equals to 2x minus 8 plus 12. That's 2x plus 4. That's the lines equation. We're nearly there. This is the one thing that I know caused trouble. The last question. And I'm insisting here, this comes up nearly every time we're asked to find something with line equations at IGCSE. Every time I exaggerate slightly, it happens a lot. We're told to find the equation of the line parallel to PQ passing through 0, 6. Now, the fact that it is parallel tells us a lot. Two lines are parallel if and only if their gradients are equal. Okay? So the fact that it's parallel to PQ tells us must have, must have the same gradient as PQ. Okay? So M must be equal to 2. Right? So we don't need to use the gradient formula. We don't have to do any of that. We know, due to the fact that it's a parallel line, that its gradient has to be 2 as well. Next thing I'll point out is how special the point they are giving us is. Where is the point 0, 6? If you plotted it on the xy grid, where is it? It's like after the minus y. It's here. Oh, yeah. It's on the y-axis. In other words, it tells us, they are giving us the point at which the line crosses the y-axis. That 6 is the y-intercept for that line. Meaning, we know that the line, it's a line, right? So we know it has an equation like this, y equals to mx plus c. We just said that m has to be equal to 2. And because the line passes through this point here, c must be equal to 6. Remember, c is the number at which the line crosses the y-axis. Did you catch that? To convince yourself, look back at the line equation we just found. This y equals to 2x plus 4. Where does it cross the y-axis? At 4. So this number here is the number at which the line crosses the y-axis. Yeah? So to answer that question, and I'll just answer it, and I'll be right with you, Angeli. To answer that question, oops, there we go. Without thinking that hard, I know that the gradient has to be equal to 2, and C has to be equal to 6. So I can just state Y equals to 2X plus 6. Done. That's the answer to that question.